Nevada. Some say there's more than sand and scrub out here. Some say there are secrets, maybe the biggest secret ever, right behind those hills. We'll present the case, you decide for yourself. Some believe, others wonder, and there may be a few who don't want you to know. The UFO cover-up. Live from Area 51, a TNT Larry King special. Hi, the TNT crew and yours truly are here alive in Rachel, Nevada. We're about 50 miles from Area 51, that mysterious Air Force base that the Air Force denies exists. This is gonna be an incredible two hours with great guests, interesting interviews, and of course, we'll include your phone calls. We'll be giving you an 800 number where you can participate. Flying saucers, UFOs, little green men. They are more than incredible tales and tantalizing rumors. They're part of our history and our culture, even if they're just figments of our imagination. All around us, they're part of us, thanks in part to those wonderful folks in Hollywood. Watch. Your choice is simple. Join us and live in peace, or pursue your present course and face obliteration. A classic threat from a Hollywood alien. Shape up or die. It was 1952, the Red Scare was on. It wouldn't be the last time scriptwriters invented an emissary from space to show human dreams and fears. I think all movies have, from the beginning of the medium, plugged into extremely basic human yearnings, fears, fantasies of every kind. Since 1947, when real-life pilot Kenneth Arnold saw silver discs over Mount Rainier and coined the term flying saucer, people have been straining to see spaceships. And if they came up empty, there was always the movies. Holy cats. We finally got one. We found a flying saucer. UFOs are a modern obsession, but the idea of strange visitors dispensing advice, discipline, or trouble is an old one try 6,000 years old. The Egyptians and the Mesopotamians considered their cities dominated by sacred ziggurats, the property of gods from the sky. Ancient cultures the world over wrote of regular celestial visitors who taught everything from irrigation to medicine. Where did they all go? Where are the demons? Where are the Greek gods? They just disappear? They left the earth? These are things inside people's heads. But others say remnants of long-vanished cultures from Easter Island to Stonehenge show today's UFO believers have history on their side. Sacred circles still mark hallowed ground from Scotland to the American West. South America's ancient Nazca lines form giant birds and monkeys best appreciated from the air. More recently, many believed in fairies, elves, trolls, or leprechauns, little people who sowed magic or havoc. Today, we puzzle over crop circles, flying saucers, and little gray men who abduct innocents. The data seems to indicate a form of non-human consciousness that is very close to the Earth, has been present throughout history. We have come to visit... Whether visitors from the unknown really did and do show themselves, or whether they're a collective daydream as old as civilization itself, Hollywood has for decades played a game of what if. Imagine they came here. What would they be like? What would they do to us? What would they do for us? All of that stuff is really interesting to play with. You're wiser than anything on Earth. Use that intelligence. Look at me and know what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not your enemy. I'm a scientist. I'm a scientist who's trying to... Some aliens you just can't talk to. But the thing was a product of the 50s. By the 60s, we seem to want extraterrestrials to be teachers. 2001, a space odyssey showed a far superior intelligence helping mankind evolve in a remote but caring way. And in more recent years, we fantasized about not only meeting aliens, but running away with them. And when
when the mothership in Close Encounters finally showed itself at a secret government landing pad piloted by benign, mischievous aliens, it was ordinary Joe Richard Dreyfus who was welcomed aboard. Extraterrestrial contact has become our dominant fantasy. What about reality? Do the movies simply reflect age-old yearnings to explore, to grow, to make contact? Or are they an attempt to make sense of an inexplicable real-life mystery? I think that people want to believe so much that, that it flies in the face of any logic. As Captain Kirk, William Shatner, and the Star Trek crew encountered fictional aliens for 30 years, but that doesn't mean he believes in real ones. People interpret what they're seeing uh, as science fiction because they want desperately to believe that they exist and that there is another intelligence out there that can, like Big Daddy, come and put their arms around us and gently say to the culture that has gone astray, Big Daddy's here, we'll set you on the path again and everything will be fine. Almost at once there followed the discovery of Piper Drive. The spinning round spaceship has become a cultural icon, a symbol for mystery, excitement, hope, maybe even rescue. Some say it's so pervasive it explains a lot of real life saucer sightings. When people have been exposed to these stories, on television with dramatic uh, uh, reproductions or dramatic uh, visual aids, naturally that uh, uh, influences the story they tell. The last night I saw a flying object that couldn't have possibly been from this planet, but I can't say a word. I'm muzzled by army brass. A laughable I movie, but outside. to a lot of real life military men, that's not a laugh line. Army and Air Force personnel do see strange things. They are ordered not to talk, as we'll see tonight. Some are talking anyway. We'll see that the U.S. government is holding back UFO files, contents unknown, while pretending not to be interested. We'll see how a U.S. congressman was stonewalled when he probed a legendary, unproven UFO story. The movies, the lunatic theories, and the desperate desire to believe all make it doubly difficult to investigate all this. But tonight, We'll try to play it right down the middle as we ask whether UFOs are the story of the century or just a case of wishful thinking by a troubled species hoping for company in a lonely universe. We are back in Rachel, Nevada with our first two distinguished guests. Stephen Greer is a North Carolina doctor. He does a lot more than watch the skies. He fires off messages, and he says that someone or something is responding. Dr. Greer is looking for close encounters of the fifth kind. Also here, the dean of UFO researchers, a man who says the world governments have engineered a kind of cosmic Watergate to hide the truth from the public. The esteemed nuclear physicist Stanton Friedman. What is key, Stephen, about this area? Area 51. Well, this area has been reported uh, for a number of years to uh, house uh, black operations uh, from the Air Force and other agencies that have allegedly been back engineering uh, alien spacecraft, uh, as they're called, or extraterrestrial spacecraft. Is, this uh, is the place where the Air Force supposedly hides things from us. Yeah, I'm not saying that that's the case, but that's what is reported here. What do you think goes on here, doctor? Uh, mister, please, Larry, no okay. free degrees. Uh, okay, you're a doctor, you're a mister. Yes, there's, there's no question that there's all kinds of secret government development projects going on over the, the hill. Uh, whether any of them have anything to do with flying, so that's another question entirely. Certainly, if you were going to try to test fly a new strange vehicle, this would be the place to do it. It's a huge area, access is prohibited. We're not on Area 51, we're nearby, because they wouldn't let us on Area 51. What would happen if we went there now? We'd be stopped at the gate, we would not, and we could be arrested. I know of people who've been arrested for trying to look over the mountain to look down at the area. What does the sign at the gate say, Stephen? I haven't actually been What's over there. What's the name there. of this base? Uh, there are several names. Area 51 is the larger name. We're near Nellis Air Force Base. There's Groom Lake, there's Papoose Lake. There's a whole bunch of different and facilities And the Air Force tells us this is what? <laughs> Until very recently, they were saying there's nothing out here. No, it's a secret thing place. out there is not there. Yeah, it's not there. You can't look at it, and the guards can't look at your videotape on your camera because they're not cleared to see what isn't there. We'll get to that later. What, Dr. Greer, do you believe? By the way, your specialty is what? 
Emergency medicine, emergency and trauma medicine. So you're in an emergency room every day? Yes, well, not every day, but enough. You treat trauma patients? Yes. How'd you get into this? Well, it's a long story. Uh, I had an interest. My uncle worked on a project working on the Apollo mission, and I had an interest in space. And uh, many years ago, I had a sighting at fairly close range of an object that was clearly not an airplane. And from that, uh, my interest grew, and I developed uh, an interest to the point that I founded a research organization called CSETI. And, Which stands uh, for? Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence. What, to, at this minute, do you believe? Well, you know, I separate my belief from what I know. Okay. What do you know? Okay, what I have, our assessment at this point is that there is at least one extraterrestrial civilization which has managed to make its way to our corner of the universe. And number two, that there's no uh, evidence at all that they have hostile intentions towards this planet. And number three, that the priority at this point must be trying to establish uh, some sort of a liaison to them, some sort of a, a diplomatic liaison to them, and that's what we're working on. How do you know this? Well, uh, I personally have been within a few hundred feet of these craft as they have been uh, maneuvering. You've seen them? Uh, we have seen them. I've been on research teams that we have put out in areas where these objects have been seen, and we have been able to signal to them. Uh, we have been able to vector them within a few hundred feet of our location, uh, 10 feet above the ground. I, there's no question in my mind that these are real and not a figment of anyone's imagination. Stanton, do you believe Dr. Greer? Yes, I believe Dr. Greer. My own beliefs are a little different in the sense that I agree with what he said, but I carry it a lot farther. I'm convinced after 36 years of study and investigation that the evidence is overwhelming that planet Earth is being visited by extraterrestrial spacecraft. That means some UFOs are alien spacecraft. Most are not, I don't care about those. Right. Second, we're dealing with a kind of cosmic water gate. That means some few people in the government know what's going on, not everybody. Third, none of the arguments made by the debunkers like Carl Sagan and Phil Klass, who never refer to the relevant evidence, stand up under careful scrutiny. And fourth, we're dealing with the biggest story of the millennium. Visits to planet Earth, successful cover-up of the best data, the bodies and the wreckage from 1947 for 47 years. Why? Uh, I don't Why speak you, for the government, but I'll give you, you five reasons. <laughs> yeah. Go. Uh, one, we want to figure out how they work to make wonderful weapons delivery and defense systems. They can fly circles or anything we got flying. Rule number one for security, if you set up a secret project, is you can't tell your friends without telling your enemies. They watch like Larry King, too. Second problem, the other side of the coin, what if the other guy figures out how they work before you do? How do you defend against them? You don't want them to know you know, they know. Third, if there were to be an announcement made by highly trusted individuals that indeed some UFOs are alien spacecraft, what would happen? We can imagine church attendance would go up, mental hospital admissions would go up, stock market would go down. But I think the biggest thing that would happen, based on 600 college lectures, is that the younger generation, which was never alive when there wasn't a space program, would immediately push for a new view of ourselves instead of as Americans, Chinese, Canadians, as Earthlings. And, and, and this plot is conceived to be hidden for these five reasons. By whom? Uh, I, I didn't give you two of them. We, apparently, the intelligence agencies have been running the show for a long time. I mean, the National Security Agency admits it's withholding 156 so UFO documents. You're saying, Stanton, that the uh, president, uh, Reagan, knew about this and kept it hidden, or he didn't know? I think he probably did know. And kept President it. Bush knows. Certainly Bush knows as head of the CIA okay. beforehand. President Clinton knows. I have, no, I have no idea how much he's been briefed. He's got a lot on his plate right now. He might have been told very little of the whole story. Yeah, my, my view on this is a little different, and that is that uh, I don't believe that the, when most people in government say they don't know anything about this, they are really telling the truth. And, and I, I question whether the current president and some of his cabinet have been uh, adequately briefed. This isn't to say that there aren't people in some of the agencies who, who, who know. I'm, I'm sure there are. Uh, but I think the control point on this is not where most people would think it would be. You've contacted them, or you believe you've contacted them? We have had a limited uh, exchange. Yes. By what means? By light signaling and uh, by uh, graphic signaling and what do you mean, through light other. Signaling? Like well, basically, code. for example, if an object is arriving out in the field, we will uh, try to engage it. I hope it. it happens now. Well, who knows? But uh, we will uh, signal to it, and then it will signal back congruently. Like saying what? You'll beep what? It's not, it's not to say anything. It is simply to establish that they see us and we see them. Three flashes, three flashes back. That, right. that idea, Larry. I see. You know, it's four flashes. We're right. here, you're here, we're there, yeah. you're there. Now, there have been reports of more advanced uh, uh, communication. But uh, I think one thing we have to back up and say is that any 
uh, craft capable of getting here from another star system is not going to have technology that would be used by AT&T and what have you. So we have to keep a very open mind about what modalities of communication might be out there. Any of those government reasons logical to you, Stanton? Well, I worked on classified programs for 14 years. I've been to 15 archives. I know how easy it is to cover things up. And I know that the major concerns often are technological and power-oriented. So the fifth reason is economic discombobulation, Larry. You make an announcement, people think that soon there's going to be new methods of ground transport, air transport, energy production. That causes chaos on the stock market. We're going to take a break and come back. There'll be more guests, and we'll be including your phone calls. Our numbers are 1-800-348-3900. 1-800-348-3900. This is our TNT UFO special, Larry King in the Desert. We'll be right back. My mind is open. If there's good evidence tomorrow. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to believe that we're being visited. Coming up, the secrets of Area 51. This presentation of Larry King, the UFO cover-up, is brought to you by Advil. Nothing is proven to last longer than Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Some days, I get these really pounding headaches. I used to take Tylenol, but it didn't always get rid of all the pain. So I've been using Advil for a while now. I found that on my tough headaches, two Advil work better than two extra strength Tylenol tablets. Better than extra strength Tylenol caplets. Better than Tylenol gel caps. And you know, nothing's been proven to last longer than Advil. For my tough headaches, Advil just works better. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. Imagine a couple of Swedish engineers have dinner with a couple of German engineers. The Swedish engineers, overhearing, talk about safety, while the German engineers, over Bratwurst, talk about the joy of driving. And what do you think they'd end up with? Probably the new Volvo 960. Now the only question is, who's going to pick up the tab? The new 960 from Volvo. Looking really fresh, but let's dress you up a little. Maybe add a few bows. Bird's Eye, the fresh look for vegetables. Masterful, absorbing, 75 season score spectacularly. Consistently outstanding from start to finish. Can't miss TV. This film epic is icing on NFL's birthday cake. Join TNT for a special encore presentation of one of the best historical sports films ever made. 75 Seasons, the story of the National Football League. Monday, 7 Eastern on TNT. Tommy Lee Jones, coming soon in a new motion picture on TNT. The Good Old Boys. It's Double Dilemma Days at Folsom Lake Ford and Toyota. We're moving to the new Folsom Auto Mall, and we're still overstocked with hundreds of 94 models. So beat the 95 price increase and drive home in a brand new 94 car, truck, or van while we still have a great selection. New Ford, Toyotas, even used cars and trucks with no down payments or no payments for 90 days. Plus, we'll pay off your trade no matter how much you owe. At Folsom Lake Ford in Folsom and Folsom Lake Toyota in Rancho Cordova. Making a false or fraudulent workers' compensation claim is a felony subject up to five years in prison or a fine of up to $50,000 or double the value of the fraud, whichever is greater, or by both imprisonment and fine. If you have been injured on the job, you have rights. You have the right to temporary disability payments, medical care, vocational rehabilitation, non-discrimination by your employer, and compensation for any permanent limitations. I'm Timothy Shrek. Make your problem my problem. Call the law offices of Timothy B. Shrek today for a free consultation. 925-1886. By way of correction, uh, we gave you the wrong 800 number. <laughs> it's 800-448-3900. 800-448-3900, not 348. And if someone is at 348, we apologize. <laughs> it's 448-3900. Welcome back. We're in Rachel, Nevada, in the shadows of the mysterious Area 51. Just behind, behind us in the foreboding desert scrub, amazing things are going on. 
That much is certain. But a growing list of witnesses say that they're hiding more than just secret planes back there. How much more? Our crews went in for a look. referred to Groom Lake, Area 51, the military will not acknowledge that those terms exist. When you don't exist, you can do anything you damn well please. This is the most secret place in America. It was home to the stealth planes back when they were only rumors. Now the rumors are of exotic, officially non-existent projects like the Aurora. Nobody in government ever talks on the record. I can't tell you what anything they're doing out there. It's under the Secrecy Act. If the government really is hiding hard evidence of UFOs, all the rumors point to Area 51. This country's less lonely than it looks. Head down the unmarked access road and they know you're coming. The desert's alive with electronic sensors. If you drive past signs warning you not to take pictures, unmarked white Jeep Cherokees appear with men in camouflage, wielding binoculars and rifles. The next sign near the robot camera says, use of deadly force authorized. That's far enough. So what's going on around this bend? This object rose from the area of Papoose Lake, and it would exhibit totally unconventional flight characteristics. This man, who goes by the name Agent X, finds and photographs secret aircraft. He's defied federal law to shoot these pictures of Area 51. He can identify virtually every plane in the sky. But what he saw here one night terrified him. As it would travel in one direction, it would slightly deform to the trailing edge. And as the object would stop, it would kind of have a little lag and a little shift beyond it. And it would drop down. And it literally seemed like uh, it was alive. Did Agent X see something genuinely unearthly? To see this thing has made me critically examine the way that I view the world and what I think. And it lends a lot more credibility to several of the stories that are floating around this area dealing with Papoose Lake. For example, a reclusive physicist named Bob Lazar has long claimed that he worked on an extraterrestrial craft at an installation near Area 51. Other sources talk of Project Red Light, an effort to test fly otherworldly craft whose force fields might make them look distorted or alive. I mean, if you're going to see anything, this is where you're going to see it. So believers are lured to Tiny Rachel in the shadow of Area 51, where the first thing you see is a government radiation meter. Rachel is a hundred people in one bar, the Little Ailey Inn, where saucer hunters trade tips and alien heads stands guard. And all kinds of folks stop by. I am an alien visitor, but I don't look like one. I'm in disguise. Glenn Campbell's seen all kinds, a computer programmer turned desert activist. He's running a one-man campaign to open up the secret base. My angle is, let's look at the government's secrecy, see if this is excessive. And if it is, and, it, and we can hack away at, at it a little bit, then eventually all these mysteries will be solved. Campbell's still undecided about UFOs, but he doesn't like Area 51 security patrols making arrests on public land or wiring it up with motion sensors. And he doesn't like the Air Force trying to seize even more land around Area 51. Between the security, the threats, the radiation meter, and the UFO talk, he says this is a scary place. People really are afraid of leaking things out. Uh, I see that. I used to believe that the government couldn't possibly keep a secret this big. But now I see that, that it, in this particular place, it could. Nevada Congressman James Bilbray says yes, Area 51 has secrets to keep. And yes, the secrecy's justified. It didn't become a serious problem just until a few years ago when all of a sudden this rumor started that there were spacemen out there and they had a captured spaceship and they had bodies of aliens. Bill Bray says he's been over a lot of the base that doesn't exist and saw nothing you might call out of this world. But he wants the UFO buffs banned from eyeballing Area 51. I read science fiction all the time. It's been something I've done since I was a teenager. But the fact is that they've got to understand you've got to balance that with national security needs. They cannot have access to a lot of facilities. 
Back at the Little Ailey Inn, the believers are anything but discouraged. Even though you, you may be totally skeptic about it, you've got this, this thing pulling you saying, just in case, you sure would like to be there at the time. There are two tourist destinations here in uh, Rachel, Nevada. One is the Little Ailey Inn right across the road. The other is the Area 51 Research Center. Its operator, Glenn Campbell, who's presided over a kind of media frenzy over the past uh, recent months, joins us and our panel now, joining Stanton Friedman and Dr. Stephen Greer. What do you believe? You moved from Boston out here, right? That's right. Just for this. Just for this, and I, I don't believe anything. I just like to let the um, evidence speak for itself. What do you do? What did you do in Boston? I was a com computer programmer, and essentially I do a lot of the same stuff here. I organize data. You don't believe? What fascinated you to come live out here? Well, I came because of the UFO stories, and they still fascinate but me. But what really uh, keeps me here is the, the human stories. This is really cutting-edge humanity. This is uh, an example of how uh, humans deal with the unknown. And I think regardless of what the truth is, it's interesting to see this process work. What do you know about Area 51? Uh, uh, what well, do you know? Well, certainly the, the vast majority of it is, is routine military testing of secret weapons, uh, things that wouldn't be too interesting to most civilians. But I do not discount the possibility that there, there is alien hardware being kept out there or have been kept at some You're point. You're open to that possibility? I'm open to it. Why? I continue to hear uh, secondhand stories from, from workers who have who have, have been in there that, that suggest this. And certainly, workers in there do not discount this possibility themselves. And the workers in there, where do they live? They live on the base? Largely, they live in Las Vegas, and they're shuttled up in, in jets. In jets? That's right. We can't land there. Can't uh, even go no, over there, right? We can't do it comfortably, no. What, is, what, what does the Air Force say if we call them in Washington about that base? They'll say the area is used for training. How Quote, many people training. are there? Uh, perhaps 1,500, that's a guess. Okay. What are they, okay, why is this a secret, in your opinion? And we can all chime uh, in on this. It's a secret because it's always been now, a let's secret. Let's say they got a plane there yeah. that can go uh, vertically take off and go 8,000 miles a second and traverse the Earth in two minutes. Right. Tell wow. us. Wow, wow. Why can't they tell us? They should be able to tell us. The, the secrecy has always been the, the modus operandi. You know, are they worried about Saddam Hussein? What? Yes. Who's the enemy? Good point, good point. What do you think, Stephen? Why don't they just tell us? Tell us what the plane is. Well, I think there's a lot of residual uh, uh, secrecy left over from the Cold War. And uh, big institutions uh, turn uh, around about as easily as a super tanker. And I think a lot of the policies that are currently in place are holdovers uh, from the, uh, the Cold War era. And I in think other words, Stanton, do you think we're holding things secret that anybody in the public could know about? I think there are a lot of those things, Larry, uh, but you have to understand we're dealing with an annual $34 billion black budget in the United States. About half on technology, that's a lot of bucks, and half on spying. National Security Agency, CIA, DIA, NRO, all these things. That's power. When you've got knowledge that nobody else has, that's power, and these guys want to stay in power. The fact that Cold War has gone down doesn't matter to them. They want their jobs. We have in front of us a UFO model if we can show that on. It's from the Tester Corporation. We discussed Bob Lazar in that earlier package. This is based on Bob Lazar's, was built based on Bob Lazar's description of the craft that he says he saw at Area 51. Glenn, do you believe him? I don't know what to believe. That's a great story. It's it's well-constructed story. It's a beautiful I, model. It's a beautiful it. model, and there's a, there's a rich technical story behind it. Uh, you can believe it or not believe Could it. Could it be experimental? American aircraft. I seriously doubt it. If it Why? does anything that it's uh, well, where are the wings? <laughs> where where are the air air? Where are the houses? engines? Where are the engines? It's something. Maybe it's far. a roll along the ground thing. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> La Larry, it, it's important to recognize here that there are two separate questions with regard to the model. A, whether there are vehicles of that sort out at, the, at Area 51. B, whether Bob Lazar is telling the truth. I've done an enormous amount of research and I find that nothing checks out. He isn't a scientist, he didn't go to MIT, he didn't go to Caltech, he didn't work for Los Alamos, worked there for a while as a technician apparently. He's a liar? Yes. So I will say you don't that believe flatly. this is there? Uh, that's a separate question. He may have heard stories about something just like that. I certainly don't believe his reconstruction of the means of propulsion. He's got a nice story. It's good science fiction, but as a nuclear physicist, and I've worked on nuclear rockets and fusion rockets and such. 
the story doesn't hold together when you look at it critically. Now, the there's a separate signs you know. Yes. But there's a separate issue here, not whether that is at this area, but does such a thing exist and has it been documented? The answer to that is absolutely yes. There are daylight photographs of objects uh, quite close to what that uh, looks like, uh, which are very good. I acquired one through a person working with us at NASA. And I'll tell you another thing, and that is in England uh, in 1992, we had a research team that was successful in vectoring into the field that we were operating in within about 10 feet above the ground an object that looked almost identical to that. So I would be inclined to believe that there are, are such craft. Whether there's one at Area 51 is another question. Maybe the model's based on what he saw, not the other way around. How long have you been here, Glenn? Two years. In that time, are you more inclined to believe or less inclined? Uh, the, the most obvious stories are that you can come here to this remote desert highway and see flying saucers on demand, and I think that's ridiculous. However, the longer I'm here, the more ex-workers I talk to, the more I'm not so sure about this craft. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of interesting stories, and they all seem to hold together that the uh, Air Force has somehow obtained craft And what like do you this. do with them? How do you make a living <laughs> doing what you do? I have a little... Who uses your services? Oh, uh, visitors come and buy my book, and uh, I have a little mail order business where I sell documents relating to this. Largely, I live off my savings, though, from my previous life. A little boring out here? Oh, no, not at all. It's a, not it, boring. It's a rich pageant of humanity. You blink and miss the city. <laughs> the rich it. pageant of humanity comes here. Oh, aliens of all sorts. I, you might have seen Ambassador Merlin on the cliff. Uh, <laughs> I've uh, met a number of aliens, and uh, that, that's what fascinates me, how, how people... Uh, respond to this sort of thing. We will include your phone calls throughout this program. Other guests are coming too, by the way, but let's take our first one with us are Glenn Campbell, Dr. Stephen Greer, and Stanton Friedman. I'm Larry King, and this is our UFO special on TNT, and we go to Petoskey, Michigan. Hello. Hi, Larry. Um, I have been interested in this in a long time. I have two questions. Um, the first one is, is there any proof that people are actually abducted and then returned, like with these horror stories such as uh, abuse and probing, um, to where they're really scared to death? And the second question? Um, this is from a Christian point of view. A lot of it has come up that we feel that angels have been uh, looking after us for quite some time because of the end being near and so forth. Now, has that ever religious been... Aspect in a minute. Thank you for calling. First aspect. You got a point? Well, that's highly controversial, and uh, my own fix on you that... Think? I think it is extremely rare that anyone has taken on board one of these. I think probably between 90 and 99 percent of those sort of reports are not what they appear to be. Even with the book by the Harvard psychiatrist? Yes. John Mack. And so I would say that uh, there have been a few accounts where people have been taken on board. I think it is much rarer than uh, UFO followers would have you think. I, I was technical advisor on the UFO incident that's playing uh, today on Turner. and. Uh, I'm convinced that some people have indeed been abducted. Remember, the question isn't, are all the stories true? The question is, are any? Are, the question isn't, are all UFOs alien spacecraft? The question is, are any? Any conflict with religion, as any of you see it? I've is seen this... people who feel conflicted by it. Yes, uh, certain fundamentalist groups say we're the only intelligent life in the universe, and this is the work of the devil. And I don't buy that either. I mean, for them, it's a problem. For me, if you're impressed with God of our local planet, how much more impressive to think of the God of the local neighborhood. Let's get another call. Virginia Beach, Virginia, with Messrs. Friedman, Greer, and Campbell on our UFO special. Hello. Yes, I'd like to know if there's any truth to the alien ship that crashed and there were seven bodies and they were taken around to different cities in the United States and one of them is supposedly still in Langley, Virginia. Well, Could you address that? Thank you, Stanton. I'm the original researcher on the so-called Roswell incident. Sixteen years I've been plugging away at that. Yes, I'm convinced that a saucer crashed, that bodies were picked up and recovered. Where they are now, I don't know. Nobody is telling me. I'm not on the distribution list for the classified documents. Where the wreckage is now, I don't know either. But there is overwhelming evidence that at least one, more likely two, saucers crashed in New Mexico in 1947. Huh. We'll be getting into lots of this and uh, some of the things discussed we'll be covering as well and we have another guest joining us you're watching our TNT special on UFOs we're in uh, the deserts of Nevada about uh, two and a half hours out of Las Vegas and nothing like Las Vegas I trust me 
I guess I believe that there were at least three alien bodies on board this vehicle. Where it ended up, uh, your guess is as good as mine. Is there real evidence of UFOs? Stay tuned. He has no clients. No conferences. No appointments. No schedules. For contemporary man, that kind of freedom is found in a different form. El Dorado. With the North Star System by Cadillac. Let a new car payment be a financial burden. Get Smart Lease by GMAC. It's an affordable way to drive off with a new GM vehicle. And it might even give you something you wouldn't mind carrying around. You are a master of mirth. Just the sound of your voice invites laughter. You have a positive genius for not taking anything too seriously including yourself. Introducing Time Bank. Only Time Bank awards you one free minute for every five you spend on the phone. Getting paid for making people laugh. What a concept. Maybe you will take to the sea. Maybe you will have Australian lobster for dinner. Maybe you are the most important person in the world. Maybe you will eat ice cream at midnight. Maybe life is more fair than you thought. Maybe this is not impossible. Maybe you could be there right now. Holland, America Line. Week two of the O.J. Simpson trial. Join us for a look at the victim in the case. One of Nicole Brown Simpson's closest friends shares his feelings on Larry King Live, Monday Night 9 Eastern on CNN.